was my presentation. Uh, okay, so let's start from uh, from this. I will give you a couple of words. Hello, everyone. Uh, I had this unique chance to go one of the first among Ukrainians uh, to go back after the war started. I waited for this special permission from the US government to go back home for uh, any period of time I can, but not more than 90 days. And uh, it took me 191 day to get this permission. Unfortunately, it is that long, but I had to do it because my kids stayed here with uh, my mother-in-law and I had to go back. So I had to be sure that they will let me come in and keep my current status, which was very important for me too, because I waited for the status for five months, the status that allows us to live here and work here legally. So I was one of the most, the, the first Ukrainians who got this document. So it was very exciting uh, for me from, from one side, from the other side, I was so nervous how it will happen. I, I didn't see my husband for 10 months. I didn't see my mom more than one year, my mom and my sister. So I will tell you what I saw, but I just would like to show you what they did. Back to my home, to Kiev. Kiev is not that ruined, thanks God. This is the capital. Uh, the city is big, but uh, of course, um, some buildings with civilians uh, were ruined. And, uh, you know, uh, in general, the atmosphere is exactly right. The country is in, at war. I crossed the border with Poland. And, you know, it was that emotional moment for me when I saw the flag of my country and I was just standing and it was one minute for my bus to go. Uh, it was very emotional. But then, you know, I didn't recognize it. This is not that I didn't see it before. I saw it many times. I stayed in one of the cities in the Western part of Ukraine uh, that we visited many times with my family, but something changed, you know, the atmosphere, people, especially people, I can say, their faces, their eyes, they're not happy anymore. They are very exhausted, maybe angry at some point, some of them full of hate, which is kind of normal for this situation and totally unhappy. So, but before going to Ukraine, <laughs> I will tell you this story that how it, how it started. You know, I was so happy. I, I know that one lady witnessed how I cried when I got the document she was with me. She remembers how I started to jump like a crazy and started to hug her because I was so happy that I finally got this document. So I planned everything. Monson's family helped me to get to Chicago airport. And we were very happy at this moment. But, you know, then I understood that you shouldn't be happy, that happy, because um, life gives you additional obstacles. So the flight from Chicago to, to Warsaw was late seven and a half hours. <laughs> I had to wait. I met a lot of Ukrainians and, you know, we recognized each other immediately and we chatted and we helped each other. So finally I got to, I landed in Warsaw. But uh, no one, uh, I, I had no chance to message anybody because my American and Ukrainian phone didn't, didn't work at all. So it took me one hour to fix it, again, with help of Ukrainians who shared with me their internet. So I called my mom, uh, I called my husband, I called family here, said that I landed. But then, you know, I missed everything. I missed all trains, I missed all buses. So I had to find a way how to get from Poland to Czech Republic. And it was late, it was cold, and all these delays were because of the snowstorm, which was pretty big. So, but you know, I'm strong Ukrainian woman. I will <laughs> deal with this. 
So uh, I took the taxi. The taxi driver was uh, um, like, he was a very good guy. He found out that I'm Ukrainian and Polish support Ukrainians. And he started to say, oh, Putin, he's a bad, 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 bad guy. Just don't worry, we will we will find the way. So he took me to the bus, sta bus station. And it took me four and a half another hour of wait for the next bus to the Czech Republic. So I took uh, four hours and a half trip to Czech Republic. Again, there is no border, but when you cross between countries in European Union, there is no like customs, anything, but just uh, they have different mobile uh, op operators and <laughs> my telephone didn't, didn't switch uh, again. So uh, when the bus driver stopped, I was in the middle of nowhere, some city in Czech Republic, and no one meets me. The temperature is very low. I am alone. And I almost was ready to sit down and cry. I can call. I don't know where to go. And uh, then, you know, I noticed in a 10, maybe 15 minutes that people start to look two, two, two silhouettes. They are looking around and it was my mom and my sister. And this is very personal for me, but I would like to share it with you. <laughs> you were crying and laughing. <laughs> <laughs> My mom said we didn't recognize the first. My my hair card is different right now from from the one that was in the beginning. Again, okay, can we return to presentation? And um, I will skip skip couple of slides. Yes. Yeah. You a very different kind of crying when you met with your family than when you received word at our Zanta meeting yeah. that you were at yeah. in December. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. You know, mm -hmm. we, we cry sometimes when we are happy. Sometimes we cry when we are not happy, you know? Yes, of course, it's it's different. And I, I will tell you more, when we met each other and at the time I had to say goodbye to her, it was different too, uh, because she was grabbing me with every finger. And I know that we don't know when we will see each other. And it's hard, you know, it's very hard because you just, we live unpredictable life and um, we don't know what will happen to us. And I will skip a couple of slides. Uh, then we had three nice days. Oops. Oh, okay, next one, please. Uh huh. Then we had three wonderful days. <laughs> you see uh, <laughs> how much snow they had. So we we had uh, possibility to talk, to discuss everything. And uh, for me, it was very important to see her because uh, before this uh, in November, it was at mid of December, she had a birthday, she turned 75 and it was very important for me to meet her. So after this, I was not able to stay longer. And of course I didn't want to stay longer. I uh, started to do my trip from Czech Republic to Ukraine by bus. And uh, it was the hardest, one of the hardest trips in my life because uh, it is very difficult road uh, to customs. You need to go out 
uh, with all your luggage. They check you and they check seriously everything, like bus, ceiling, all the emptiness. You know, they will go and flashlight what's what's inside. And after this, finally, finally, the whole bus was. <laughs> We knew already uh, the story of each other and they knew that my husband is going to meet me and I didn't see him. So everybody were looking for my husband. Where is he? Where is he? And he was with the uh, flowers and uh, we were chatting, you know, one minute, 30 seconds, you know, and finally we met. And can you do the next slide, please? Yeah, and this is the first picture, you know, I decided we need to do one and then we will disappear and let, and, and let the world wait. So this is that happy moment. You know, I was so worried. You know, we, we lived together for many, many years. This year, it will be 23 years together. And, you know, just as we sometimes women do, we have a lot of thinking about relations, family and everything. So I was so worried how it will be. But you know, it turned to be as if we never said goodbye to each other. So we spent wonderful time. We had a possibility to talk finally face to face, to discuss our current situation, to think what we're gonna do. Because he was very optimistic in the beginning, but he doesn't sound optimistic anymore. And he said, Snijana, you know, we did such a long trip. You did such a long trip trip for uh with with the purpose to save our kids and it's not a time to go back because i was hoping again in in my mind somewhere deep inside i met, made this deadline for myself that probably in august 2023 we all will go home mm -mm. unfortunately i can't take them back the war is not finished yet the situation is, as I described previously, no normal school, nothing. And it is still dangerous. Okay, uh, the next please. And then we decided that we need to go back to the family that gave this tiny wooden house in the mountains. If you remember my previous story, after the war started, we... Uh, we are so lucky because I had this perception of uh, the war, uh, understanding that everything will be like uh, the war will start. Uh, we uh, took uh, our car and uh, we went to a ski resort because my husband didn't believe in the war and uh, our friends offered us to go instead of them. So I thought this is a chance and we went there. So uh, the, the war started in two days and we were already on the Western side of Ukraine, which is now more safe. And uh, when the war started, everything closed and we had to find the house to stay. And this nice family, they live in the mountains. They gave us their tiny house. Uh, it is very old. It witnessed World War I, World War II, and Russian-Ukrainian war now. And you have to put locks every three hours because it's cold. The winter in mountains in Ukraine is cold as here. So we decided to go back and uh, say thank you. I brought some candies from here to kids. And, you know, we started... Then my, my parents-in-law lived with them too. Uh, after I left, my husband brought them there. So this family became as our extended family too. And if you will notice, we found very good way. This is the lamp for bloggers. It is so bright. So I, I'm sharing life hack with you. <laughs> Whenever you don't have electricity, you can have your power bank ready. And then you insert USB in your power bank and then you have for hours light in your house and it's very bright <laughs> so simple way but people have to think about it so this is was this was Christmas but uh, this was a uh, western style Christmas in Ukraine we celebrate Christmas later like all Soviet tradition and this was the first year when almost everybody decided to switch uh 
this is the table, how it looks. We have to have 12 dishes on the table. This is a tradition. So we spent some time with, they have a generator also, and we had the fun jokes, you know, what is uh, this slide comes from government or our own? So, you know, it switches. You, you need to understand, do you, how much time do you have? And sometimes you are in a situation, oh, governmental light, what to do? Okay, do laundry, go to shower, cook, what to do? Two, three, four hours, then it goes down. But generator uses gas, so it's expensive. So you need to think, and they have two small kids, which is, I, I just can't imagine. Okay, next, please. Uh, so I made my way back from Chicago to Ukraine, to the place where a state when the war started. And uh, now this is the place. It, it's again, another move back to the zero point. This is a ski resort because everybody started to say, Snijana, are you going to Kiev, France? We need to see you. And I said, oh guys, I'm sorry. I, I can't go to Kiev because we were expected that uh, they will bomb it. Uh, actually, they did all the holidays long. It was dangerous. So, uh, I, I, first of all, I, uh, I'm responsible for kids. Kids are here. What if something will happen to me? Uh, and then, you know, I didn't want to go and see my apartment, my stuff. So do not, to, do not make that connection again that I, I made myself to lose. And many people uh, decided, oh yeah, it's kind of dangerous. Let's meet. And it, it was four or five hours drive for, for us and uh, more for my friends. And this is New Year Eve, 31st of December. So usually previously we had a celebration, you know, for several days, big uh, table full of delicious food and everything. This time we met uh, at the restaurant that was was uh, working there. So what, what we did, we uh, watched the speech of the president we cried, then we hugged, we had a little drink, and we went uh, to the room because it's a special hours when you can go around the city. But again, you know, for myself, it, it is in psychology, it's called to close gestalt. So I made my way back to zero point. And, you know, psychologically, it helped me a lot because it, it for me, I think, I had this possibility to go all through these feelings because I remember when I um, came to this old house, everything as it was, like our car went to the backyard, they opened the door, we started to run to each other, hug, you know, and this picture is kind of the same, but then the event was different. So I was so happy that I made this trip and it helped me psychologically to go to zero point. Next, please. And uh, my experience of total blackout. Oh, this is Kiev. This is my husband's experience. So you don't have lights, uh, just cars, and uh, big, big, big city. Five million of no, not five, four, four million of people, and uh, so many people from Kiev originally moved to Europe. Like I moved here and so many people from little villages, from everywhere, somebody, a lot of people lost everything. You saw this uh, video. So they moved to the biggest city because of the opportunities. And uh, Kiev is not that Kiev as it was before. And it was dark. Right now it's a little bit better, but uh, like all December and January and November, the situation was like this. So next, please. And this is my personal experience. I decided to go to the doctor and the appointment was 7 p.m. So it's good and thank you, Elon Musk, for flashlight in iPhone. <laughs> oh, not Elon Musk, I don't know who. <laughs> not Elon Musk, sorry. Uh, anyway, for batteries to Elon Musk. Um, so, and I, it's good that I know city and I know where to go. Otherwise, mm -mm. and I started to see people uh, that are coming with flashlights here, flashlights, you know, that they uh, have in their hands. I was not that prepared. And the um, atmosphere is that, you know, you are in the middle of nowhere. 
and it's scary too <laughs> i will be honest it's scary too and uh yeah this is the city i was and this is my trip to doctor yeah next please yeah three weeks passed as one day and uh um uh, by that time my father-in-law joined us in this little city because we were afraid that something can happen to the railway um, uh, station. And um, uh, for example, we have already tickets and what if uh, my father-in-law will not be able to take train and come to Warsaw because we have direct train, uh, which, uh, which is very small and it's very difficult to buy tickets. So we decided that he will take bus and will join us in this little city. And we took bus from this little city to Warsaw. And this was the hardest trip in my life. It took me 18 hours. Uh, but usually if you drive, it's four hours. It was extremely difficult. And I was so worried. My father-in-law, he's 78. And uh, he has some health issues, and one of the reasons why he come here too, uh, we got a message late November that he needs uh, um, surgery, heart surgery, uh, and uh, it's kind of emergency. And uh, it is possible to do in Ukraine technically, like the surgery by itself, we have good doctors too, but re rehabilitation, uh, no heat, no light, he lives on 12th floor. So my mother-in-law who is here has to go back, which is of course she would do if necessary, but again, it's put her in danger and uh, she will be helpless because even to call ambulance, you need to have a uh, mobile connection because we have all, we have mobile phones and sometimes internet doesn't work and mobile connection doesn't work. And I didn't want my husband to appear in situation when he's helpless, for example. So we, we decided that uh, we will try to do it here. So it was our last moment. And I didn't, I even forgot to make a picture. He said, come, 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 let's do final picture because I promised many people that I will send pictures like showing what's going on. So this is the moment I'm crying as usual. <laughs> Next, please. Oh, and here we are in Warsaw, you know, I, I've been in Warsaw many times and now in Europe, it's a country that is very fast developing and I like Warsaw, if you will have a, have a chance to go there, the country is very interesting, very, it remind me, reminded me United States, I think a lot of investments from here uh, came to Poland and especially to Warsaw. So from one glance, it is Chicago. From another glance, it's uh, Madison even, you know. So uh, we made it. We came here in uh, mid of January, on, on 10th of January. And we were lucky the next day, all the, <laughs> all the flights were canceled in the United States because the system that allows people to enter the country was broken. So we were on the edge, you know, all the time we were on the edge. Can you, can you do the next please? Yeah, and uh, that that's it about my trip. You know, uh, I was so happy that I had the possibility to do it. It gave me a lot of confidence, a lot of energy. What's next? Uh, yes, we, we decided to stay longer at least another year yeah and we have to find our ways here how we we will settle down um and uh, we we did a lot with uh, your help with help of your congregation and always we are grateful for everything that you do for us and without your help you we will not be able to live normal people's life here and just a little update, Daniel works in Culver's in uh, Middleton. So he's even promoted. He started to work uh, late November, he's promoted. Uh, he's very happy working there. He invites us from time to time, especially when uh, his father-in-law came. So he said, okay, come, I will serve you. Next, please. Uh, yeah, Valeri is in preparational heart surgery protocol. I think uh, it will happen in a month, within the month. And of course, we are amazed uh, 
about hospital, UW hospital. We met wonderful doctors, professionals, uh, people that uh, we trust from the first glance. And I think we are in good hands and please pray for him and for us so we can go through all of this. Thank you. And uh, when I was in Ukraine, I got Arena's wish. Uh, it's, uh, they made ornaments on the New Year tree and she wrote her wi wish for 2023. I wish the war will finish and my father will come to USA. This is her, what she wants. Next, please. And right now, my husband, and I would like to share it with you, is called to mi military medical board. This is a commission when they make evaluation. He can probably go to the army or if he will get excuse from doctors on his medical condition, he will not. So please pray again. I know I'm a patriot of my country. We, we need our men to be there, but at least I want uh, to get this possibility for him temporarily to come and see kids whom he didn't see more than one year <clears throat> by now. So we still hope he will join us one day. And next one. Jana is cooking and helps me around the house. And it's a huge help because I started to work. Next. I work as assistant to attorney in, near Hilldale. Uh, I met a wonderful uh, uh, person who agreed to uh, hire me as um, full-time but with flexible uh, schedule. So I can work three hours during the day, seven hours. It depends on my situation. He knows everything about <clears throat> my husband's situation and my father-in-law situation, my story. And uh, what we do, we do taxes. So I, on Friday, I did taxes. My, it was my first time. So I, I'm not a certified CPA, but I have financial and economical education. I'm a master's of economics. So I know uh, what, what it is about. And uh, of course he approves, but I did it myself. And also we prepare legal documents such as wills, uh, powers of uh, attorneys uh, about finance and health and HIPAAs and all the stuff. And uh, I'm very happy because, you know, this is uh, an opportunity for me to go out of the house to feel myself at business again <laughs> as I was because last 10 years I worked for my own and I was a very busy person. Previously I had corporate life. I was an extremely busy person. And I'm happy that I have this chance to go to go out, to be useful, and again to be with my family. So thank you very much. This is little story and uh, uh, brief uh, overview of everything. Again, my family sends you uh, hello. Uh, all of them are busy <laughs> somehow. Uh, my father-in-law is in protocol, so he can come uh, in public for sometimes. Uh, they wanted to say hello to you. And again, thank you very much for everything that you do for us. Uh, we are just lucky. We discuss it every day, how lucky we are because I know many stories of Ukrainians. None of them are that lucky. Thank you, thank you, and pray for my country, please. Any questions? Thank you. You are a very strong Ukrainian woman. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my question, one question, I have probably many, but um, what exactly did you mean by uh, zero when you went to the place? Zero point, it's it's a psychological uh, thing. It's called to close gestalt. It means that when you are, when you have problem, you need to uh, live with this problem and just analyze it and go to the zero point when you didn't have this problem. So you should work it out and come to the situation as if it never happened. So maybe this is what I, this is what I give myself again, you know, something that helps me to live my life because I need to have something 
that like hooks that I can can um, put my life on. Like you know, when you are in um, space, you are everywhere, and it's good and bad because you are not connected. And I'm trying to get these connections, mental connections for myself. So I have house right now. I have kids, I have family, I have my uh, parents-in-law, my husband is there, but I have to tell myself that this is temporary. You know, we are here because, because of the war, but my kids study another hook, you know, it's good for kids to study. Soon my husband will come another hook. So it gives me an opportunity to stay in somewhere in between, you know, this, this big space and not to lose myself because it's, it's tough. It's tough. I, I talk to myself every day and I need to be strong. Otherwise, so I, I tried to, it happened to be so that, you know, I came back to the zero point. I was standing near the place when I've heard the, uh, like when I found out that the war started, I was there in that place. I was standing there and it it was in my head. So it gave me opportunity to, not not to be that much connected again to this. Snijana, can you uh, give us an update on where uh, Daniel is with his college stuff? <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> unfortunately, we can we can uh, move forward with UW. Uh, right now because of the tuition fee. He's considered to be an international student and the fee is so high and is not affordable. But he, all this, uh, all this time, he is a student of Ukrainian American Concordia Univer University, Concordia that is situated here. And uh, they do not have like online sessions. They do not have... Um, meetings with teachers but they still give assignments and he passes like midterm finals and he is graded for a lot of subjects so all this time he's on his way to his bachelor degree and it happens that in a year in a half he will become a bachelor of business administration so uh, we have this idea in mind uh, start to think about masters here I don't know, will it be UW Madison? What will be our status? Maybe it will change somehow and he will be at residential tuition, we don't know. But again, we, we decided to give him this opportunity to finish it. So he works and he, he has his um, uh, assignments to do. And uh, we will see what will happen. Again, so many questions, not so many answers. But uh, in my family, there is a uh, understanding that, and I did it uh, all my life to my kids. So education, education, education. And I want him to be a very well-educated person. And again, it's another challenge for me to make this come true. And I, I will try. I, I just want to, this is Laura, I just want to comment that um, Daniel works at Culver's in Middleton, and I was there to yes. get some oh, food yeah. um, <laughs> a few days ago. I walked in in the evening, and there he is, and I was a disaster that night because while I was waiting for my order, I happened to <laughs> knock over one of our soft drinks, <laughs> and here comes Daniel with the brew or the mop, you know. <clears throat> But I watched him because there weren't many customers and he, I've, I saw him smile more the time I was waiting for my order than I have seen him since you arrived. Yeah. I think he has just felt so much of his, the things that he, his goals he have and the things he needs to be a healthy young adult, just blocked, blocked, blocked. And I think now he has made friends among his co co-workers and now I'm seeing the smiley, happy, super responsible, yes, but much happier Daniel. And I just wanted to tell you, I saw him, I made him clean up my spilled drink. And <laughs> but he is he seems so happy and so connected with other people about his age. And that's huge. 
Yeah, thank you, Laura. It's very important to me because, you know, I thought in the beginning that he's not that traumatized because of the war and situation that happened to us, but I was wrong. I thought more about Arina, but Arina was nine. Now she's 10 and she is more flexible. She's still more flexible in everything. But uh, I didn't notice, and it's my mistake, that he was traumatized. So, yes, he was sitting in the room. Um, he didn't have friends. He didn't want uh, to go out. So he was in this, in his thoughts, you know. And uh, when he started to work, he changed. He came back, I, I can say, because uh, he works hard. He takes additional hours, first of all, because of money, because he wants to make money, which is good. And also, of course, he started to go out. He's promoted because he shows that he wants and likes to work hard. So also recently he started to, um, he has some spare days, which I can call days off uh, in Culver's. So he started to go uh, to work as waiter in one of the restaurants, at least he's trying, you know? And I said, I, I keep saying, Daniel, please stop. <laughs> you need to rest. But you know, this is, this is normal for, um, um, for his age. And I'm very happy that now finally he is out. Thank you. Shnizana, what is that dish that we're looking for? Oh, it's borscht. Borscht. Oh, is it borscht? Yes. With sour cream in the middle? Yes. Yes. And is that um, parsley or? It's dill. Great. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Very delicious. We we found the way how to cook real Ukrainian borscht here. We found right ingredients, especially tomato paste. We tried several, but we found, yeah, yeah. Jana is cooking <laughs> Ukrainian Ukrainian food, and uh, yeah, it's it's. She she's very helpful, you know, because otherwise uh, I, I, I have a joke uh, at my office right now. My boss says, OK, what is your uh, schedule for the next day? And I open my calendar and say, you know, OK, here I work at your work at your office. Then I work again. And he says, oh, where? And I said, OK, I'm working as a driver, as a cleaner, because, you know, I'm the one living in the family who drives. Uh, actually, Daniel passed knowledge test, and he he's um, trying to get a driver's license. So maybe one day it will be it will be more than one car, and it will be a little bit easier because you know I'm do I'm the one who's doing groceries, all the translations, all the medical appointments, all the telephone calls I pick up and answer. So I don't mind, but it's just a lot of a lot of work to do. I thought of two more questions. Okay. <laughs> uh, your mother and sister normally, before the war, lived in Ukraine, and they moved to Czech Republic for safety. Correct? Yes, yes. They evacuated there. Yeah. And do they live together? Yes. Okay. And good point, because uh, I didn't tell you, because it just happened. My mom had to go back. She is now in Kiev. It happened two days ago. Because of uh, her uh, dental situation, he needs to go back because in Czech Republic, they don't have um, proper insurance and uh, to prevent more complex situations, she had to go. And my mom right now is in Kiev. So she called me at the time she came into her house, which is my house, when my, my, my childhood house. And she said, Snijana, I don't know. And the same feelings actually that I had. She said, it's not my Kiev, it's not my country that was before, meaning that it was before. And she started to feel herself very bad. She said something wrong with the pollution, with the air. We still don't know what was in these bombs. What about this nuclear plants that were stopped so many times? We don't know. And she says, yeah, you know, I will go back definitely because we, we were worried. She cried all the year long. She cried. It's tough to be. They live in very modest, modest uh, room. It's a three bed rooms, three beds room, uh, not room, three beds apartment. They uh, live in one. Another family live in one, and another family live in one. They share same bathroom, say, same kitchen. Uh, one fridge with different shelves to each family. So it's it's not that simple, but again, it's modest, but it is safe. 
And she says, oh my God, eight times this alarms, alarms, alarms. I can't go. If you go to the grocery store and alarms start, uh, everybody close everything. And you, you need to go to the shelter, but the, no, it, it's not possible to do it all the time. To go to the shelter, you need to make a way, like, to, like it will take you 10 minutes again to go to the shelter from the grocery store. So the life, why people are exhausted? Because it's exhausting. And uh, she said, oh, I definitely go back. <laughs> I definitely, not forever, for sure, but definitely go back because we thought that maybe she's sneaky, you know, she will go and they will say, oh, no, I will not go back to Czech Republic because I want to stay home. And uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. she had the same feelings as I, as I had. And all this time I was keep telling her, mom, you go and see, okay, go. If you need to go, you will see, and then you will make your decision. And her decision is not that she thought would be. Right. Uh, my, thank you. My second question is, um, the military is wanting to recruit your husband, but he might have medical conditions yeah. to keep him from. It, yeah, I, I got your question. Okay. It's, and it's, when could he come if, if he yeah. had passed? Um, it's kind of a routine in a country. All men are not allowed to leave the country. This is just, but there are some categories that can, for example, if you have three kids, we don't. For example, if uh, your parents are disabled and you need to move them out of the country, no, in our case. But this is quite normal, normal routine right now that they call, uh, actually, this is the first call for him. So they call people professionals first, you know, and uh, now they need more people because Russians uh, made a military call and brought a lot of people and they, uh, Ukrainians need more people because you need to fight with them. So, uh, yes, my husband has some issues with health. Um, I don't know what what will be their decision when they will evaluate him. He, according to the law, he needs to go and they investigate him. He is doing labs. He visited. He he needs to visit several doctors. And then this board comes together and decide on each person. Is it worth taking this person to the battlefield because people should be healthy? It's it, we are not Russians that take everybody, even prisoners and even prison uh, women. So I don't know. I tell I, I will I will tell you the truth. I would like him not be uh, not be a good candidate to go. Yes, I don't know when it will happen. Everything is very slow. I don't know. I let's say let's say the following. Let me wish that he will come on my birthday in May. If he will be able to do it but I don't know I pray I pray and uh, I hope I will be lucky again <laughs> just don't know let's say me uh, you mentioned uh, your little girl is 10 um, is does she go to school is yes. she able to do that yeah, oh. yeah, and it's it's amazing about your country. Uh, the day we arrived uh, was 6th of March. On 7th of March, uh, me and Annie Man Manson, who are our host family, we came to um, registration office, and uh, they live in Fitchburg, so it was uh, uh, another school district. Now I live in Middleton. It's Middleton Cross Plain. That one I don't remember. Verona, I think. And the next day, Irina was in school. We have to move her because we moved to Middleton. But she she's a student of Elm Lone Elementary. She's she's doing good. She's academically talented uh, girl. Uh, her English is just perfect. She speaks to me English at home. Uh, she just switched with all the pronunciation, all little details, you know. Uh, it's easy for her, and uh, she came here with good knowledge of English because I put a lot of efforts uh, for, for for education in education of my kids, especially in English. So now we got a letter. She she is she's transferring to Cromery, 
And she's very excited because one of her wishes was uh, that uh, she told me once, mom, I would like to visit the United States and she's here. The reason was not that good, but again, she's here. And the, now she had the wish to become a student of uh, middle school because she doesn't want to go back. And this is another truth about uh, what's happening to my kids because Daniel doesn't want to go back. And I totally understand him because he has a possibility to start a new life. Irina, she's dependent on the decision of me and my husband, but she begs us. She says, mom, don't do it to me again. Do, do not uproot me again because I have friends and she's at sleepover today, which is something new for her too. You know, she's excited. She sends me pictures how they are doing there. So, you know, and for me, like I came a little bit more calm down with the with everything, but new challenges and new calls arise, you know, and now I have to think what's next. And my head is busy. Documents, who we are here, what will be the next steps of the government's government for Ukrainians? Yes, we are here till my status is here till uh, 19th of October 2023. For sure, I I believe that it will be extended. But what's next? So, so many questions. So I don't have answers for them. So I need to, to wait and live my life. And all the answers will come, I think. <laughs> Shnezana, you've, you've thanked us for our partnership with you and your family today. But on behalf of all of us, the church, we want to say thank you to you because another word for the Holy Spirit, a wonderful translation is an advocate. And you've allowed us to be a part of the movement of the Holy Spirit to advocate for you and your family under, under impossible circumstances. And we're very pleased that you have survived this. We continue to pray for you. And more than that, we walk with you as Jesus has called us to do as the Holy Spirit, as your advocate in the days ahead. And I, along with everybody here today, expend our, extend our full-hearted support to you and your family and thank you for giving us this opportunity to be the church. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Just so many things I would like to say. Mostly they come from my heart so my my mouth can speak because heart has a different language it's more a language of energy and uh, everything that comes out i wish you feel it i will just send this energy of mine to you and you if you can read it you will you will understand what i feel and what i would like to share with you this is love this is uh Gratitude for, for the compassion. I learned my lessons too in life. I, I, I never, never expected that I will give so many love, friendship, compassion again, support. I just didn't know that it exists in the world. And thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you.